into a international need. Nigerian peace corps moves closer to gaining recognition as paramilitary organization 18 years after. As 2016 World Season Farming closes in, correspondent on special assignment takes a look at expectations and government policy. All is not yet over an alleged rape of four-year-old pupil by a school proprietor. Investigation transferred to the Office of Inspector General of Police. Hello, this is NTA International News with Cliff Ayazir. Information and Culture Minister Lion Mohammed has assured Nigerians in the diaspora that the federal government is working towards ensuring that their rights are protected at all times. The minister was speaking at a town hall meeting with Nigerians living in Côte d'Ivoire. Correspondent Anthony Forsen reports. security, its anti-corruption crusade, and the successes it has recorded so far in fighting insurgency, said the present administration will be willing to accept any genuine effort on their part to assist in redirecting Nigeria to the path of progress, especially in the fight against corruption. When you fight corruption, corruption will fight you back. But please, if you have any information, you have provision for whistleblowers, and your commissioners will be respected, Nobody will know that information. Please, if you are ready, let us know. Questions were asked on the sincerity of the present administration's intentions and the slow pace of activities, but the minister was quick to respond, saying the rot in the system cannot be cleared through a quick fix mechanism. What we are asking for is just some more understanding and perspective. We did not create these problems. We met it, but you did not elect us to make excuses. You left us to solve problems and will come to solve the problems. When the issue of child trafficking was raised, the minister was moved to believe the situation is still thriving as the case of these three young girls who were presented before him. He assured that the matter will be looked into with utmost urgency. The wife of the vice president is um, very passionate about this matter and I will definitely you know, uh, no, put this matter before her. But it's a matter that is that seeking one's heart. Anthony Forson, NTA News. In line with the present administration's drive for transparency and accountability, ministries, departments, and agencies have been urged to comply with the Freedom of Information Act. Chairman has Committee on Freedom of Information and Reform of Government Institutions, Gabriel Onyenwife made the submission during interaction on how to successfully implement the art. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegloye has details. The Freedom of Information Bill became law on May the 28th, 2011 and protects the rights of Nigerians to have access to relevant details and information on transactions by ministries, departments and agencies. To date, however, less than 10% of MDAs generate annual reports in compliance with the Act. This forms the basis of interactions between the House Committee on Freedom of Information and Reform of Government Institutions and the Open Society for Justice Initiative. Ministries, departments, agencies, public institutions should proactively let the Nigerian people know the details. This is how much has been passed. This is what we intend to do. And Nigerians who need information or data should be given free access to such information. The House Committee on Freedom of Information and Reform of Government Institutions is expected to consider the 2014 and 2015 reports of the Attorney General of the Federation on compliance with the Act and, where necessary, take further legislative action to ensure proper implementation. From the National Assembly, Dennis Adignoui, NTA News. 18 years after, the Nigerian Peace Corps has taken a step closer to becoming legally recognized as a paramilitary organization in the country. This was a consensus during the public hearing for an act to establish the Nigerian Peace Corps, organized by the Senate Committee on the Interior. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegloye again reports. 
clearly a bill that has generated high interest for and against, the public hearing could be described as thoroughly engaging. Having scaled through first and second readings on the floor of the Senate, the Vice Chairman of the Senate Committee on Interior, Bayero Uzman Nafada, explains the significance of the current stage in the process. The merits and demerits of passage of the bill to establish the Nigerian Peace Corps were thrashed out by the various agencies. We should be able to relate and notify our senior partners, like the police, the NSCDC, since they bear out to go in and take appropriate action. We must take steps to build the capacity of our youth today for future leadership challenges. Since the functions seem to be duplicating itself, there's no need of uh, passing the bill. The ethos of the Nigerian Peace Corps is to empower youth to contribute to the economic and security regeneration of the country. From the National Assembly, Dennis Adignoli, NTA News. And over 60 million farmers are getting saved for the 2016 wet season farming. Agriculture correspondent Musa Babaliu looks at challenges and expectations of farmers, government policies and programs on food production. Nigeria is currently housing over 60 million farmers who have been contributing to the national food production chain using local know-how in cultivation, processing and marketing of their produce. The major challenge before the farmers as investigations show include access to input such as fertilizer and chemicals, storage and low yield as a result of environmental challenges. One of the major constraints has been that there has been a gap between the researches that are carried out within the research system and linking to the farmers. Most often um, the researches are carried out without the input of farmers and other stakeholders. What we need to do is not only expand the area under production, but to intensify production so that we can increase production per hectare. Having identified this, the federal government says it is rolling out policies and programs that will not only address the challenges, but assist in boosting farmers' production. This will be achieved, as the government says, it will sustain the Growth Enhancement Scheme program introduced by the former Minister of Agriculture, which allows farmers access to inputs through mobile phones. We will therefore strengthen our partnership with the states, help them produce, we will work in collaboration with other ministries, departments and agencies. In cooperation with the Federal Ministry of Water Resources, for instance, we will expand our irrigation-based agriculture and bring farming into an all-year-round economic activity. As the farmers are getting set for the 2016 West Season Farming, agriculturists have urged governments at all levels to urgently address farmers' herdsmen's conflicts and ensure early distribution of fertilizer and seeds in good time. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. In an effort to end the problem of petroleum supply and distribution in the country, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, has recommissioned the Escrevo's Wari Kaduna pipeline. The minister stressed that both Wari and Kaduna refineries will now receive crude simultaneously for the first time in many years. Two critical crude uh, supply pipelines, one in Wari, which is going to be dropped down uh, into, into the Wari refinery, and the brass one now, which is feeding into the That will enable us to keep the refineries running. And that they're happening at a time when we absolutely need the help to clean out the queues and all the challenges. So the first ultimate responsibility for all of us to ensure the pipelines are protected by the activities that we have in community, by identifying those who break down, by those, by those who are stealing products. That's the first thing. Fire government can do it alone. The noted that for the first time in many years, all the three refineries and major and crude pipelines will be working at the same time to end the scarcity. He also enjoins citizens to be more patient as the corporation is working hard to end the fuel shortage across the country. Former permanent representative of Nigeria to the United Nations, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, wants Nigerians, Nigerian politicians to see governance as a teamwork. He made the appeal while delivering a paper at the 2016 annual lecture organized by the Madubelo University Alumni Association in Abuja. Salihu Abdullahi has a report. 
The professor of political science, Ibrahim Gambari, spoke extensively on the challenges of ethno-religious dimension of Nigerian politics, promoting sustainable national integration. He noted that for Nigerians to fully harness the leadership potential of President Muhammad Buhari in tackling the challenges of insecurity, corruption, epileptic power supply, and few strategies, those in the executive, legislature, and judiciary must demonstrate the same commitment of zero tolerance to bad governance and develop capacity to bring about the change Nigerians voted for. The enemies of the Nigerian state are not necessarily individuals. I use the term to encompass those groups characterized by certain negative tendencies, phenomena and traits which taken together constitute serious impediment to the growth, development, corporate existence and efficient function of the Nigerian state, which serve the interest of the many rather than the few. President of the ABU alumni, Dr. Ahmed Tijani Mora, called on members to support the association to mobilize resources for the advancement of teaching, learning, and research. Other speakers expressed hope in a better Nigeria and advocated an holistic and effective peace building strategies that will solve the crisis across the country. In Abuja, Salehu Abdullahi. MTNU. In a bid to complement effort of government at providing health care delivery to vulnerable members of society, obstetricians and gynecologists in the Northeast have donated drugs and other medical items to internally displaced persons in Maiduguri. Mohamed Ibrahim reports. The distribution of the drugs and medical equipment is part of the society's volunteer obstetrics scheme. Muno State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Haruna Micheli, applauded the leadership of the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Nigeria, Sogon, Northeast Chapter, for the contribution which he says demonstrates humanitarian service to the vulnerable in camps. People in the IDPs actually are getting their fair share of health care. Uh, but of course, assistance, you know, 90% of the displaced people are actually in the host community. So we need, yes, we need more assistance. President Sogon Professor Bala Audu said the gesture targets will be and nursing mothers and that the supplies estimated at 5 million naira will be distributed at other clinics and camps within the metropolis. And medical equipments that are targeted at maternal, neonatal and child health as well as drugs that are meant for basic antenatal care, care during labor and after delivery. On behalf of IDPs, the camp officials expressed gratitude to Southern and all other organizations to contribute for well-being of IDPs. High Point was presentation of drugs and medical equipment by the President Southern to the State Commissioner for Health. In my degree, Mohamed Ibrahim, NTA News. You are watching the news at 7 on NTA International, Abuja, Nigeria. Stay on for more reports in just a moment. Nigeria. There are more than 101 tourist and cultural destinations that can account for over 1 trillion naira in national revenues if properly harnessed. With profitable opportunities across its multiple value chain and to promote the Nigerian culture and tourism sector for optimum economic development, the Minister of Information and Culture, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, is inviting stakeholders to the 2016 National Summit on Culture and Tourism. Theme, repositioning culture and tourism in a diversified economy. Special guest of honor, the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR. Exhibition and Gala Night, 27 April 2016, 7 p.m. Conference opening and plenaries, 28th and 29th April 2016, 8 a.m. daily. Venue, Congress Hall, Transcorp Hilton, Abuja. Sign, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Information and Culture. If you hear a bomb explosion or gunshots of an active shooter, that might be a terror attack. At such times, always remember three action words. Run, hide, report. Don't try to run towards the terror scene to save the situation because there might be a second bomb blast or another attack. Run far away and take cover. Make sure you are safe first. Yes, it is in our nature to sympathize over the hurt. But remember, 
Only trained personnel can help in such situations. When in a secured environment, promptly call relevant authorities and help will come. For anonymous reporting, call 09630-3250 to 5 or 0813-2222-106. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Hygienic environment, use of insecticide treated nurse, as well as conducting tests for symptoms of malaria, have been identified as ways of reducing the prevalence of malaria in Nigeria. Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, said that this at the World Malaria Day Church Service held at the Methodist Cathedral of Unity, Abuja. Olajite Bello has details of these and other church engagements. It was an atmosphere of praise and thanksgiving as officials of the Federal Ministry of Health joined other Christians to commemorate the interfaith church service ahead of the World Malaria Day. National Coordinator, National Malaria Elimination Program, Dr. Nena Ezegwe, who represented the Minister of Health, says the federal government and its rollback malaria partners have been able to reduce malaria prevalence to 42%. Every suspected case of malaria should be tested first and foremost before you begin to treat yourself. So this is a time for Nigerians to wake up for the clarion call, to respond to the need to care for our people. A demonstration on how to use the insecticide treated net climaxed the service. Meanwhile, at the St. James Anglican Church, the Bishop of Abuja and Primate of the Anglican Communion, Most Reverend Nicholas Oko, has charged Christian youth to channel their energy to hard work get towards national development. We will have problem if we fail to reorientate our people. It was a power-packed service at the Champions Faith Assembly Church with God's mercy as the crux of the service by both the host and guest ministers. There is nothing as important as the mercy of God, especially for us as individuals and for us as a country. Without mercy, we can't ask anything from God. Without mercy, the heavens will be, will be closed. The service featured a special Thanksgiving session in Abuja, Olajide, Bello, NTA News. The Christian community in Nigeria has been challenged to align with the move of God, which carries with it limitless possibilities. This was a submission of ministers of God at the Apostolic Gathering under the auspices of breakfast with the king in Abuja. Ifanye Zumba reports that the theme was Wind of Revival. <laughs> Breakfast with the King is a ministry that mobilizes, empowers, and releases apostolic and prophetic believers to usher the kingdom of God to Nigeria and equip them for the work of God. Speaking on the theme, Apostle John Teshola of Dream Life Church, United States of America, said, The ultimate objective of God in bringing about revival is reformation. And I encourage every leader and every believer in Nigeria in their churches to understand something new is happening in the spirit realm. Like a seed planted 10 years ago, which has flourished into a giant tree, Breakfast with the King, the convener, Apostle Obi Pax Hari, said is a testimony of God's faithfulness. The kind of revival that we are going to experience as a, a nation is a revival that makes it possible for us to become true uh, reformers who go on to transform our nation. I haven't watched her this many years. I've seen God's hand very, very strong and heavy upon her life. Um, she's a gatherer. She's a strengthener. Um, she's one whom God has used as a catalyst for the church. See a ministry that has affected lives, that have changed situations, that have held this nation together. This month's celebration is likened to the biblical Passover. <laughs> The last may not have been heard of the school principal who allegedly raped a four-year-old pupil in his school, Victory International School, Maraba. Moplang Dako, who has been following the story, reports that the case which is being handled by Nazarawa State Police Command has now been transferred to the office of the Inspector General of Police. A few weeks ago, the news of the alleged rape of the four-year-old girl drew attention of the public, particularly civil society groups who have condemned the act. 
The Nigeria Children Government is one of such groups seeking justice for the girl. This case will not die. This is the resolution of the children of Nigeria, and it is not a subject of debate. That the families of this evil man must be responsible for the medical treatment and education of this poor young girl. This case is only one out of many reported cases of rape in the country, which prosecution of offenders observers say has been slow and oftentimes difficult. The problem is the, the evidence required to prove rape under the common law. The law as we have now is adequate. It's just the process of bringing them before the court. A group of lawyers who have taken up the case confirmed the transfer of the case to the Office of the Inspector General of Police. Victory International School, where the act was committed, is a block of six classrooms with one staff room, which also serves as the proprietor's office. A week after schools in the area resumed for academic activities, it has remained closed with the absence of the proprietor, which has halted academic activities. But well, aside the closure, how far can the law go in prosecuting the offender to serve as a deterrent for others? From Asopada, the scene of the rape, Muplan Dakok, NTA News. For news around the globe, over now to Ilyazo Ali Yakubo. Egypt President Abdel Fattah al Sisi and his interior minister won on the planned anti government demonstrations that security forces would deal firmly with protesters. He said there are people calling once again for damage to Egypt's security and stability. He reads, and I quote, Our responsibility is to protect security and stability, and I promise Egyptians that no one will terrorize them again. Interior Minister Magdi Abdel Ghaffar in a statement said the nation's security and stability constitutes a red line and no attempt to damage them will be tolerated. And Libya's Vice President Ahmed Metin has expressed hope that the European Union will enter into an agreement with this country similar to that of Turkey, restricting the flow of migrants to Europe. Metin made the appeal while in Rome, meeting with Italy's interior minister, Angelino Alfano. The vice president has asked the two countries to proceed with an agreement between the European Union and Libya based on the one between the European Union and Turkey. According to the March 18 agreement, Turkey agreed to take back all migrants arriving in the Greek islands in an effort to relieve the pressure on the European Union that saw one million migrant arrivals since early 2015. And from Scotland comes a report that two women have been found dead in a flat in the Gallowgate area of Glasgow. Police said the deaths may be due to carbon monoxide poisoning and were being treated as unexplained. The bodies were discovered after the emergency services were called to a property in Dal South Court at about midday. Nearby residents from a number of other flats have been evacuated as a precaution. Elias Ali Akubu, NTA News. From developments around the globe, Monday's weather prospect is next in Nigeria and some world cities.